Even though most students have less than a month left of summer until school is back, and for Jennings students, it's like days left, it's not too late to keep your kids learning. Even if you don't feel like you've done a great job so far this summer, it's not too late. Child development expert and founder of Building All Children, Kendra Morgan, is back with us this morning. Good morning, Kendra. Good morning. You know, I, I'm kind of in this boat too. Maybe we feel like, man, my kid was loving reading, loving to write, learning, and now they've lost interest it's not too late to kind of start it going again. Yeah, no, it's not. And it's it's here. Summer is almost over. The school is about to start. So review, just review. Figure out kind of what they learned last year and start working on those skills because chances are they've probably forgot some of those skills. And, you know, it, it happens. We have this great graphic that shows you're not alone. I mean, 80% no. of, of teachers are saying that, hey, we're having to spend like two weeks reteaching things, the yeah. vast majority of teachers are saying this summer slippage, summer slump yeah. happens. And it's maybe just because we don't review, like you said, in the summer with our kids. Correct. And this is the deal. This is not to make anyone feel bad or right. feel panic because we've got a few weeks to get them kind of caught up, right? And the good news is we have good educators that are going to do some review. But research shows if they step in and they know that review, they're going to be more confident, which is what we want our students to feel. What are some things that you really feel like we can review? And again, not teaching new skills, but reviewing that just even a couple week refresher yeah. can make a huge difference like specific things. okay so I would know what grade they just finished mm -hmm. and you can even Google what are some of the basic skills a second grader should know and then oh. we love clipboard work it's simple it. every kid should have their own clipboard you set it up for them in the morning they don't do anything until they finish their clipboard work oh I like that yes. so let's take a look at the graphic that is on the clipboard but I want to give you a close-up okay so this is what we're showing yeah. on our clipboard this is called summer slide tic-tac-toe a right. nice clipboard activity we're gonna do a little zoom in here yeah. show us some of the things we're looking at so the this is board. the thing we made this as general as possible so it can go for a kindergarten gardener all the way up to a third fourth grader so basically you just want them to complete a tic-tac-toe so they can go across they can go down they can go up. I mean you just want them to complete at least three objects if they could do six that would even be better um, but awesome. you want to back up and look at readings on here a couple times they've got to be reading whether you're reading to them or they're reading on their own we still okay. like parents to read with older kids too they like it and then their math skills are the ones that seem to slip so get them back into numbers um i have baggies we'll just put activities in baggies and put it on the clipboard easy so this yeah. is um, dice, a die. Throw in some dice. It comes up with numbers. They can either count the numbers, they can add the numbers, they can subtract the numbers. But you can also make it simple. Have them go count every stuffed animal in the house and then subtract 10. Yeah. That's working math. And it's not complicated, but it gets their mind going. And like for my son, so he's going into kindergarten. He had five day a week pre-K last year. Um, and even with like with the die examples yeah. for me, like I could throw it down and say how many, yes. literally how many dots are there. Correct. It could depend on, you know, how On their they skills. Are. Exactly. And the main thing too with kindergartners, first graders, these young ones, we want them to be able to know their name their birthday, first and last name, their birthday, their address, they need to know their address. And these are all things that the teachers are gonna ask them early on, and if they know that, they'll be able to step up with confidence and recite that. Mm -hmm. So start practicing those things. Start talking to them about their day, start getting in their routine of school, which means going to bed earlier, getting them up, getting good dressed, getting breakfast done, like start getting in their routine. On the tic-tac-toe board, which I think is just such a yeah. great activity, the middle one, I want to ask, so skip counting songs. I pretty yeah. much understood all of them. What are we talking about with uh, skip counting songs? So the more physical activity we can get into their learning, the more it connects those neurons. So we want them to sing the alphabet while they're jumping rope or while they're jumping up and down. Literally moving. Moving, yes. move their body. Um, and then when they get to school, they need to learn to sit. So we're going to have to do some paper time. It's okay to get out the pencils, the crowns, and have them start writing. Um, they can draw a person. A 
I mean, a three-year-old should draw a six-part person. And okay. so, I That's mean, they good. should start being able to write their first name. Um, they should be able to write their last name. Count on paper, zero to ten. So start getting a pencil back in their hand so they're doing some writing skills. Well, Kendra Morgan, this is always so yeah. fun, so enlightening with you. Thank you for taking the time to prepare all these things for us. We so much appreciate it. And we will see you again next month and Sounds talk more. Sounds great. Thank you.